Welcome to the Lipis Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Lipis Report video podcast. This is a very exciting topic that most in the industry are keen to understand, and that's how networking is moving towards a programmable platform for developers. Well, Cisco has recently announced its Nexus 9000 Data Center Modular Switch Series. And while it's impressive in terms of its performance and power efficiency and 10, 40, and 100 gigabit Ethernet port density, its programming environment sets a new industry standard and direction. Today's networks are restricted to configuration programming via CLI. But what if applications can call upon network resources automatically? Or if application developers are provided access to network state, topology, performance, counters, etc. How might applications change or user experience improve? How may a network programmable environment enable automated provisioning and orchestration of network resources triggered by new or modified workload deployment? Could a programmable network enable a new era of IT and an industry of network aware applications just when the Internet of Things? is starting to emerge. Well, the Cisco Nexus 9000 product line provides a wide range of programming options through an enhanced version of the Nexus operating systems, or Nexus. And that ranges from APIs to direct programming via its built-in Linux batch environment, RPCs, RESTful APIs, JSON, Python, and other kinds of mechanisms. Well, in this video podcast, I'm joined by Bradley Wong, who is a distinguished engineer and technical marketing at Cisco as we review the Cisco Nexus programming environment, its programming options provided to developers, use cases, and potential industry impact. But with that said, say hello, Brad, and welcome to the Lipis Report video podcast. Oh, well, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me here. Um, well, it's great to talk uh, about some of the new enhancements we brought to the Nexus programming environment and the innovation it's going to unleash in the networking and general IT industry as a whole. Excellent, great. Well, I'm really excited. And I'm sure most folks are really excited about uh, this new development. So uh, let's start with the description of the Nexus programming environment. That is, what is it, what programmers and applications will gain from it, uh, and the overall scope of what you guys are offering now. Well, well Nick, um, we decided to, to really start um, with the Nexus operating system. That's the same one that powers the, uh, the Cisco Nexus platforms today. But we've also gone ahead and taken some time to talk to a lot of our customers to understand what they really want out of the platform. They've all uniformly told us that they want more programmability, um, better automation, and a lot more visibility. So we listened and we basically went ahead and enhanced an NXOS that runs on the new Nexus 9000 series switches with a holistic suite of functions that can either be leveraged independently or in unison with uh, other capabilities the platform provides. So first we have what we call an open systems approach. We've heard loud and clear from customers that they want unconstrained access to all data that the platform can provide them. So we've given them precisely that. And this includes standard things like interface counters and SNMP OIDs, um, but also we've added in a complete Linux bash environment. So full access to functions and processes in the user space and switch control plane that users can gain access and additional device visibility and performance information from. The other thing we've done is we've also given them direct access to the, the chip level uh, Broadcom shell. And this allows them to gain uh, access to uh, resources they previously didn't have. Also, we've added in a whole bunch of resource monitoring capabilities, uh, which, for example, provides them things like um, switch buffer utilization for good debugging information. So some of our customers uh, want to be able to do a certain amount of processing or contextualizing of this data into something that's more useful. So we've gone ahead and added what we call on-device programming environments. So the first thing that we've done is provided uh, an environment called uh, LXC or Linux containers, which is used to install uh, their custom applications. So these custom applications can be installed in their own space and don't impede on other environments. The second we've thing we've done is we've also gone ahead and added a full programmable Python shell for on-box scripting. And of course, third and finally, we've gone ahead and onboarded the Cisco 1PK infrastructure, providing a comprehensive development environment for customers to write apps that can be used across all NXOS and Cisco iOS platforms. Our customers also want to be able to get access to this wealth of information they now have 
back to the backend systems for further processing. So we've gone ahead and added a new open access method called NXAPI. NXAPI essentially gives them full access to a web-based language through REST and also RPC, giving, giving them uh, information based on XML and also JSON formats. On top of that, we've also added a number of infrastructure automation tools natively into the Nexus 9000 series platform. For example, they now have access to Puppet and Chef, also OpenStack plugins for OpenStack integration, as well as EEM and also Power on auto provisioning. Awesome, that is amazingly kind of comprehensive. So not only is it a lot of access to the underlying infrastructure of what's happening on the system level of the Nexus 9000, but now there's a programming environment that actually you can write onto the devices, onto the, the products, and now also providing a much better way to access that information, process it, um, uh, format it, and send it off to like maybe other analytic engines or other kinds of applications. Exactly. Right? Awesome. Wow. Okay. So uh, maybe, Brad, um, how does the Nexus programming environment, you know, benefit both data center network operations, IT application delivery, and user experience? So kind of a mouthful, uh, but bottom line is that let's kind of sum it up and, you know, what, how does this all benefit, you know, IT folks? Yeah, well, Nick, there's, there's actually a couple of benefits that we see. Um, for example, uh, faster provisioning with automation, um, you know, fewer errors while doing things, uh, you know, automatically versus manually. Um, you know, common user environments uh, across all their infrastructure space. So someone might be able to do some things one way with their server Linux environments. They want to use that exact same methodology to apply to the network space. Um, better visibility for applications, uh, giving more efficient use of the network um, and really driving better application form performance as a result of that. Um, reducing the time to recovery in the, in the case they're hitting some, um, some, some issues uh, and also to help ease troubleshooting. But uh, most important of all, we want to give them an open, flexible and simple uh, web-based type of environment uh, for them to, to really use. Awesome. So uh, it really cuts across the entire IT delivery chain. You know? So uh, it's both in terms of um, being able to uh, orchestrate, automate provisioning uh, of the network infrastructure. It's also now applications have special access to the network so they're aware of what's happening within the network in terms of buffers and congestion and, and state in, uh, information so they can actually have, make better uh, choices and decisions on how they're delivering uh, to end users. Um, and then uh, also troubleshooting, you know, having much deeper visibility yeah. into the network. So also that's, uh, that, that's, that's a wide uh, range of use cases. Yeah, that's a large scope. Yeah. yeah, that's great. All right, so um, but let's kind of like maybe focus on like one particular uh, use case. And I'm going to kind of leave that uh, leave that up to you. So, can you share with us uh, one of the biggest use cases uh, you see for the Nexus programming environment? So, yeah. So, I mean, first of all, we have uh, obviously you know the day zero or day one sort of provisioning um, uh, challenges that a lot of people have. So, um, for example, leveraging things like uh, Power on Auto provisioning or POAP. Um, Puppet and Chef to really sort of bring devices up, um, make them into a standardized sort of configuration and, and system code loads. Um, second thing that we see is a you know, day two management type of uh, activities, uh, like for example, VLANs or ACL provisioning, uh, once again with uh, Puppet and Chef. Um, uh, third thing that we also see uh, our customers being able to use is, is really driving home the visibility aspect. Um, so we've ingested into the platform a lot of uh, capabilities like dynamic buffer monitoring, um, NX API calls from uh, an off-box uh, Python script to return uh, information back that's structured, and then you can go ahead and graph that into you know, some lightweight uh, open source tools. Um, we see quite some use case of that. Um, but you know, uh, what's sort of commonly um, not really uh, seen too much is you know, just generally when you're hitting some issues, just automating troubleshooting as well, and people overlook that quite a lot. When, when things happen, we really want to uh, make use of some of these automated scripts and automation that you can use through Python to actually go ahead and help you troubleshoot a lot more things. Um, execute a lot of commands, feed those outputs you get back into commands and run them and provide you a holistic output that you can really use to, to solve problems very, very quickly and easily. Yeah, that's great, because you know, like a lot of the kind of uh, monitoring and maintenance is like almost device by device, you do a CLI and you go from one box to another box and now you can basically script all that, you know, and automate all that and then get results in real time and even continue uh, to like have those scripts running, 
you know, just so you can get updates and statuses. Yeah, and you know, the, the key of it is, you know, basically that when you are, you know, in a, in a situation where you're hitting some issues or you're hitting some, some challenges, you really want to get to the, the crux of the problem a lot faster. And, um, and by having these kind of tools in place, which returns the relevant information, uh, you can really get that out and, and hopefully solve the problem uh, a lot faster as well and get the network back up and running. Yeah, it's great because we know like 80% of like network engineers' times are really spent on that kind of process. So automating that is huge. That's great. Excellent. So uh, maybe one last question. So how would developers and cloud providers uh, at enterprise IT organizations use the Nexus programming environment? So um, basically it's like, you know, if you're in the cloud um, provider, if you're in the enterprise IT and you're doing DevOps, how do you use this? Yeah, so we actually really see kind of like two types of users um, that can really benefit from uh, some of the new capabilities, uh, the programmatic capabilities that we've added to the, the NXOS operating system on the on the Nexus 9000 series. So there's, there's the group that uh, really got a, an established DevOps environment already, and these are the really what we call the power users. Um, they'll go ahead and make use of all the new tool sets um, and the new open system access capabilities um, you know, for example, once again, the, the chip level, uh, Broadcom shell access, bash access, uh, direct chef and puppet support, uh, Python scripting. They'll go ahead and create their, their own custom scripts. Um, they might leverage the NX API and other tools that they're already familiar with, um, but, you know, go ahead and customize the data they want and then, um, you know, ship it off to, to backend systems and do some further processing. So there's actually quite some large uh, web data center environments that are already doing this today. Um, then we also have those who are just really starting to sort of get their hands dirty. So um, the main benefits I see for them would be, you know, just getting some level of device automation, you know, leverage the same tools they use on the servers um, to bootstrap uh, their devices, um, globally provision uh, configuration, um, and also to automate code loads as well, um, leveraging things like Puppet Chef. Um, and also, once they're ready to integrate into northbound orchestration systems, leverage things like an OpenStack plugin uh, and directly integrate with OpenStack to actually get that uh, up and running as well. But last but not least, um, you know, those two environments can really work together. So we can have um, you know, the really, really experienced DevOps type of programmers take uh, some of the things they've learned and be able to uh, contribute those kind of scripts and programmatic uh, interfaces back into the community. And then, uh, you know, those who are just really starting to, to really kick the ties around can take those kind of uh, experiences that, that they, they basically uh, got from the community, modify it and really adapt it to their environments so they can actually start learning how to do so as well. Yeah, it's really, it's great. It's um, the way that I'm kind of viewing it is that you have um, big DevOps teams, they'll really kind of use and dive into a lot of the, the deep tools. Right. Uh, and I love what you just said too. It's like it's they'll basically provide, they might build their own applications on top of those, and those might just be outsourced or open sourced out to the industry, and so they'll be able to move down marketplace. And then the big thing for like network engineers, a way to automate all the troubleshooting you know, uh, process. So I think two of really great kind of use cases of folks who are really gonna get a lot of value and benefit from this. Well, Brad, thank you so much for, for joining uh, today. It's been excellent, thank you, great. Uh, well, we've been talking about the new Cisco Nexus programming environment with Brad Wong, who is the Distinguished Engineer in Technical Marketing at Cisco. Thank you all so much for watching. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lipis Report newsletter, go to www.lipisreport.com. To sponsor the Lipis Report podcast, send email to sales at lipis.com. We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.